Hey guys, Michael from Dapper Raptor here, and this is the final video in the series covering interfaces. And in this video, we're just going to go over a couple of uh, use case scenarios for interfaces uh, using my Quest Map Pro Marketplace product as an example. So I'm going to really quickly go over the basic functionality of this system just so you understand what it is and why we would be using interfaces the way we are and then we'll go into some interface functions so quest map pro is a map and navigation system if i just hit play and just play the demo for like 30 seconds is probably easiest so in this demo we've got a quest chain the quest is currently set over there you can see there's a waypoint uh, there's a beacon in the world we've got a quest trail that leads the player to that quest that fires off every i think five seconds the very top of the screen you will see there is a compass i don't know if you can see there the bottom half of the quest marker uh, is a different color to the top half that's to indicate the quest marker is below the player we have a mini map in the bottom corner that we can change the zoom level on and we can toggle all these things on and off and then we also have a world map which has map fog you can zoom in you can set waypoints all that sort of thing you can even leave notes if you wanted and there's a filtering system so that's the basic functionality there's a whole lot more in quest map pro but I'm, this is not the video for that um if you want to know more about it i have videos on the channel covering this system but let's have a look at how interfaces are used in this system so if we jump into our quest map blueprints folder there's another folder called interfaces and these are all the interfaces that were made for quest map pro itself now there's quite a lot there and that's because i break them up based on where they're using so this one is only for event uh, functions on the controller this one is only for functions on discoverable objects this one's for hidden actors and so on so you can break them up however you want but that's generally how i tend to do it have one quest map interface per actor um or actor class so in some instances you might end up with multiple interfaces on one actor and we're actually going to see that in a second because we're going to take a look at the controller interfaces here so we've got seven um functions here four of them are actually events so we're not using any outputs but we've got inputs um and we're going to go over this one here discover landmark and we're also going to take a look at get teammates because this one has an output so they're going to be the two main ones we look at here so let's open up the controller and have a look. So this is implemented within the demo controller. And let's start with get teammates. Get teammates is a really simple one. It's the basic implementation of interfaces. Uh, you can see here we've actually got another two events and that is because we have multiple uh, interfaces set up here. So one thing to note that I didn't cover in the other videos is you can just like any other functions in your project you can give your functions categories uh, which is really useful in this case it allows us to see that these ones are the ones we're looking for and these are additional ones we take a look at get teammates all this does is it's used to drive the color of uh, widgets on the screen so like for instance on your compass you might have a dot for an enemy that is red and the same dot for a friendly teammate that is blue or something like that and this is used to so that you tell quest map pro the array that is considered teammates and then it goes through and checks that whenever it's adding npcs to the compass so that's a really simple interface implementation this is most of the time how you're going to use it just to get some simple data from one uh, object to another but let's take a look at a event which tends to be a little bit more complicated so if we jump down to here this is the event we're looking for this is discover landmark which you can see has a whole lot of input and that is because this is a marketplace product i don't know how you're going to use this event obviously so i've got a really simple setup here that we'll just take a quick look at so if i walk down the road here what we're this is the discover landmark event so if we walk down this road we're going to come across a landmark which is called river outlook uh river lookout and you see that on the compass above us there is actually a pair of binoculars and if we look at the map they're there as well now they're grayed out if you look over here these are colorful this one is grayed out that's to indicate that we haven't actually discovered it yet we our player knows about it but they haven't actually been there so this works very much like how locations in skyrim or fallout that sort of thing do as we walk close to it we're going to cross a overlap volume that's going to change it to discovered and when that happens i want you to pay attention to the very top 
right up here because that's when our that's what our event is doing. It's firing off the UI that pops up there. There it says location discovered, river lookout, and you can see now this is now uh, brown, much like the beach. So if we take a look at how that's working, what we're doing is on the discover event, we're firing off this. And in fact, I can show you the discover event. If we go into, I think it's the manager off the top of my head. Discover landmark, yep, there we go. So what we're doing is we're going through, when we cross over the landmark, we are working out whether the landmark is already discovered or not. If it isn't, then we go through and go through the process of updating it to be discovered. We get the color from the landmark because the landmark can be stored in multiple places. Then we update the compass, we update the map, and then we fire off this interface of message. So you can see this is a message. You've got the little envelope icon up there and we're feeding it all the data from our landmark into here. Now, again, this has all this stuff here and that's because I don't know what you're going to do with Quest Map Pro. You might set up a completely different idea to what I've done with that little animation of the thing saying you discovered this. But in this case, we're only using the name. That doesn't matter. None of this stuff is getting hooked up and we're just going through and in our HUD, we are setting the name of the landmark and then just playing the animation. So that's a bit more of a complicated example of how you might use interfaces. By no means is it the most complicated, but that gives you an idea of how inputs might be used. One final one we'll take a look at is, let's have a look at the NPC actor. We've got this one here called NPC state. Now this is, if we go over to our example enemies over here, and I just play from there. As I walk closer to these guys, you're going to see red dots pop up on the compass and on the mini map as well. And you'll see the compass also goes red. So this is like you're in combat sort of thing. So go away from them, it goes away again. This is using that interface. And if we jump into our compass and we go NPC, update NPC widgets. So for every NPC that we are tracking, we're going to have a widget. For every single widget on every update on the compass, we're going to go through and we're going to check the NPC state using this function. We're then going to cache it so we don't have to check it a bunch of times. And then we're going to use that if any of the NPCs that are in range of the player that we're tracking are set to aware, which is like the red state, then we're going to update it, set it to in combat. So that's the first use we're using of that. We're then also going to use it to drive the color of the NPC widgets. So to show an example, if I change this guy here to be friendly, this one here to be neutral, and this one here to be suspicious. So you can think of these as your four states. Friendly is obviously a friendly NPC. Neutral is like an enemy that hasn't detected the player yet or someone that has no um, no feelings one way or another towards the player. Suspicious is like an enemy that's heard the player and might be looking for them. And aware is an enemy that's actually full angry at the player. So we hit play. We walk up. You can see already we've got a green dot and a gray dot and a yellow dot. You can look on the mini maps, probably a better spot to see them. And then if we go over here, it's red. So you can imagine a scenario where you're updating that state in real time based on the player's interactions with the NPC. And then that interface is automatically pulling the most up-to-date data and updating the compass and the map. Hopefully that's a couple of real world examples that help put into perspective how you might use interfaces. They are almost endlessly useful. Um, and that brings us to the end of the series covering interfaces. So hopefully that now has you understanding what interfaces are, how to use them, and why you should be using them.